there touch designer community Matthew here so as many of you know the courses that I was teaching at ASU came to an end um, but my work here with touch designer didn't come to an end um, so with that in mind I'm always excited about learning and I would imagine that many of you are still excited about learning as well and I have lots of exciting things to share so with that in mind, I want us to look at instancing a little bit. It's one of my favorite things. It's one of the things I'm doing a ton of right now. Um, and it's also one of the things that's really powerful to take advantage of. So let's take a look at what we're going to start to work on here today. So this is going to be in multiple parts, and that's quite all right, because we're going to try and make something that's uh, a little bit crazy. So we're going to take the idea of instancing, and we're going to play with that in terms of time. So what we can see here is we're actually seeing uh, an image, right? So we see a ramp here that's being generated, and we're seeing that kind of drawn through time here a little bit. And if I was to open up uh, a geo so we could actually explore that a little bit, um, that would look something like this. So here we've got this kind of like long cube-shaped kind of thing. We're drawing a bunch of these instances over time. It's kind of hard to tell what's going on here. If we were to change up the texture that we uh, were showing here, it would be a little bit easier. So let's do something like this instead. So here we can see our good old friend, uh, our banana, right? The Andy banana. And in fact, if we were to stop its transformation, we can see that we're drawing that as instances. We're kind of pixel mapping instance geometry. And actually what's happening is each one of these planes is actually a slice in time. That's a different frame. So we see the most present frame here at the very front, and then we kind of count ourselves backwards in terms of the number of frames that we have here in the past. Um, and if we look at it here from a kind of like off-kilter perspective, we can see that a little bit better. And if we turn our motion back on, we can start to see that a little bit, right? So we're still, you know, we're not moving fast enough to really... Um, be too crazy here. We're kind of uh, staying caught up with all this. But if we were to look at something um, like a circle that was changing in time, we would see something like this. Right? And if we were to look at that sideways, we'd see that this is actually a kind of oval shape that's getting drawn, right? Because it uh, expands and contracts, and we can see the history of this thing as we stretch back in time. It's a fun technique that I've been playing with um, on a couple projects, and so it seemed like something that would be interesting to talk about and worth sharing. Uh, and it allows us to look at instancing and what instancing does and some of the powerful ways to work with that. So without any more of that um, in store for us, let's go ahead and start digging in to how to make some of this work. Okay, so... We're going to open up a new network. We're going to go ahead and get rid of everything inside of here. And we're going to go ahead and set up a just regular old render ne network for us. So we want a camera, a light, and a geo. And you can arrange these however you see fit. I find that these days I'm becoming more and more particular about how I like my networks arranged. Um, but I encourage you to do what's best for you uh, when you're programming. Great. All right. So with that in mind, uh, let's actually scoot this guy down here a little bit. Yoink. Uh, and then we need a render top. Aye, aye, aye. Renda, renda. And this should all look pretty familiar. We've all done plenty of rendering before and this shouldn't surprise us in any way, shape, or form. Now, I actually want to go ahead and replace um, my my torus here was something a little bit simpler so we're going to dive in here let's go ahead and get rid of this torus and let's add a circle so we'll just go ahead and drop a circle in here we'll turn on its display and render flags we're going to change this radius down to 0 0.1 and 0 0.1 i happen to know that we need it really tiny here to get started so we're just going to go ahead and make sure that happens and there we've got one little tiny circle drawn right in the center of our render, that's great. And what we're going to start with here is just the kind of preliminary ideas that we need to think about, right? So we're just going to go ahead and render our grid because that's essentially one of the uh, kind of primary ingredients to that other visualization that I was showing you was that we start with this idea of a grid. And we start with thinking about how we can pixel map this grid and how we might think about this as an array of pixels that we can use as instances. 
So we'll start there. And our next step here is actually, we're going to go ahead and add another base. And we're going to encapsulate all of the uh, information about our instances. And we're going to do that. It's, you know, not necess uh, necessarily really important for this particular go around. Um, but the more complicated we start to make things, the more nice it is in terms of the way that we um, build our networks is to keep them kind of tidy and organized. Um, the more modular we make things, the easier it is to kind of swap things in and out. And we'll see more of why that's useful here later on. So I've gone ahead and made a new base. I've called it instances. I've given it a green color because I like color coding things these days. I'm going to go ahead and split my view, dive into instances, land and home, and next thing I need to do here is I need to draw a grid. So I'm going to make a grid sop. From my grid sop, grid sop I'm going to go ahead and attach a null. I need to convert this into chop information, and I did that with a handy dandy SOP2 chop. That's what this guy is down here. Wonderful. And then let's go ahead and add a null. And I'm going to call this null final. Now we're not quite ready yet, but that's all right. We can go ahead and get something started over here. So in our GO1, we can go ahead and head over to the instance page, turn our instancing on, and now we need to draw a path down to this guy right here. Now we could just drag and drop him right over here, uh, and that would work just fine, or we can actually write in the path. We can do either one of those. Uh, let's go ahead and specify TX, TY, and TZ are going to be the things that we're going to use for our instances, and lo and behold, we can see right here that that's working, but our grid is probably just like a little bit too tight. So I happen to know that I want to make this 10 by 8 as a size. I want to go ahead and make it 30 by 40 rows. That's the kind of density that I want. And now what we can do is we can just go ahead and back our camera off just a little bit. So if we were to come out here, we can go ahead and get rid of this one. Let's take our camera, and if we were to move it back to, say, like 20, now we're seeing exactly the same thing that we, I was talking about before, right? So here's just this array of circles that we're thinking of kind of as our imaginary screen. And if you were paying attention, uh, you would notice that that grid that we drew, right, this particular grid, we're almost thinking of this grid, I can go ahead and use the W key to turn on the wireframe, as uh, a grid that we might think about in terms of how our screen is drawn, right? So we might imagine that each one of these intersections, right, is actually a pixel. That's really part of what we're after here. That's what we're really experimenting with. Now, this is all well and good, right? This gets us part of the way there, but that doesn't exactly uh, help us really understand what to do next. And, and that's all right. This is actually a perfect place for us to be uh, working with right now. This is exactly where we want to be. Because our next step is to think about how we take this grid and uh, take an image and map an image onto this in an interesting way. So that's part two. I will see you in a hot second uh, as we explore what that means and how we make that work.